Hey guys, welcome back to A Beautiful Bookworm. My name is Amanda, and today I am bringing you my October book haul. Now, I know that it's only halfway through October, but I have not been buying books, and I went a little crazy, so I'm going to go back to not buying books again after this. I am going on vacation next week, and then after that is Halloween, so I just really don't see myself buying any books um, anymore probably until the end of the year. Maybe at the beginning of the year I'll buy myself some. I do have a couple pre-orders coming in, which I'll show you when I get those, probably in my next book haul, and whenever that may be. And then I do have a, I did order a quarterly uh, literary box, which is on its way, and I can't wait for it to get here because um, the book, um, the debut novel that's in there is The Mother's, and that cover is absolutely gorgeous, and I cannot wait to have it in my hands. So, I do have quite a few books here, um, and I could not get them all into the thumbnail, so I only got about half. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so let's just get started, because if not, this is going to be extremely long. First, I want to unbox. I do have a couple things to unbox here. I got this here. This is from Amazon. And then I also have this which is from Amazon as well I'm not really sure they both arrived at the same day I don't know why they are in separate packages but you know what can you do let's start with the envelope first okay. all right so in this envelope here I have tiny pretty things and this is by Sona Chara Potra and Danielle Clayton. And I probably just butchered their names, but can we just talk about this book and how absolutely beautiful it is? Now, I saw this a lot um, during Diversathon because it is about ballerinas and I think diversity in the ballet world. But I, and I saw um, she might be a Monica talking about this book and I think she was the Dorian. So, I saw this on Amazon for quite cheap and it's absolutely beautiful so I had to pick it up. The next book that I have is The Paper Princess and this is by Erin Watt and this is the first book in the Royals trilogy I believe. The third one is about to come out or just came out, I'm not really sure. I heard about this book on um, the Truth About Books channel. If I can figure it out I will link it down below in the drop down. But basically, it has to do with, like, a girl that was a stripper who gets taken in by a man who is a, like, really well-off person that used to know her family and, like, wants to help take care of her. And, like, that's all I need to know. It's like a grown-up version of uh, The Princess Diaries, maybe? I don't know. But this has been getting a lot of hype lately, and so I had to pick it up. I like light, fluffy stuff like this. And then... Let's go ahead and open this one up. It's got the little pull tab. Let's see if it actually works. Mm. I don't know if it's going to. <laughs> fail. Epic fail. Oh, yay. We got it. Oh. Ooh. I'm going to stock my camera over. Sorry, guys. Okay, and then here I have two books as well. The first is Broken Prince by Erin Watt. This is the second book in the um, the Royals trilogy. I think it's a trilogy. If it's not, let me know down below. But I don't know anything about this one because I don't want to spoil myself for the first one. So I had to pick it up because I figure I'm going to fly through the first one and going to want this one. And to be honest, books like this normally I just get from the library because they're things that I'm going to love, I'm going to read once, and then I'm not going to want to read again. But my library did not have a copy, and there wasn't any copies like to be for it to be transferred to. So I just figured I'd pick them up. They're pretty, and they'll look nice on my shelves. Then I have a book that I have been trying to read for a long time. This is Born of Deception by Terry Brown. This is the second book in the, uh, I don't think it has a name, but it's a duology. The first one is Born of Illusion, and it follows a girl who is 
supposedly the daughter of Harry Houdini. I loved the first book and I got it on Book Outlet like forever ago, but this book never ended up on there. I look all the time, it's never there. The first book is, the second book isn't. So I finally went ahead and um, just bought it. It's not very long though, it's like quite a bit shorter than the first one. It didn't have the best reviews, but I loved the first one and I just figure I need to find out what happens because I did leave on a little bit of a quick cliffhanger and so, you know. Oh, it looks like there might be a third one, but it's only available via ebook. So that kind of sucks, but what can you do? All right, then the next uh, few books I got from my library bookstore for super cheap, which is why I picked them up. The first one I have here is Nicholas Sparks' See Me. I don't know anything about this book, but I'm a sucker for his books. And it was only $2, and I think this one just came out, what, like last year, 2015? Maybe? Yeah, October of 2015, so just a year ago now. Um, and it was at my library book sale for $2, so, you know, even if I don't like it, which I don't see that happening because I love Nicholas Sparks, but it was only two bucks. And then I have the movie tie-in edition of Memoirs of a Geisha. This is a classic. It's by Arthur Golden, and I love the movie, and I actually have a copy on my shelf, which I will be unhauling uh, soon. It's like a hard cover and I just, it's kind of in bad condition, but I did pick it up at the library book store, but they always have copies of this. People are always unhauling it. So I don't know when I'll get into it, but I really love the cover. I love the movie and, you know, one day for a dollar. Uh, the next thing that I have is The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. I read what is it? Crazy Little Things or something. It's the only book I've read by her um, and I liked it well enough but they had this at the library for a dollar and it's in really good condition so I've always been, kind of been interested in this one. People say good things about it so I did pick this up. Her newest book, Truly Manly Guilty, has not been getting the best uh, reviews. Some books are hit and miss with her I think so you know I think this was a good one. I think this one has some pretty good reviews on Goodreads so one day I will get to it. I think I, I'm going to say this about all of these books because I have so many books on my TBR right now that I don't even know when I'm going to have time to read them. And then the next one actually is another Leanne Moriarty book and that is What Alice Forgot. And I actually hate this edition. Like I think it's kind of ugly and it's kind of a uh, like torn up. It's pretty battered but it, again it was a dollar and the girls I work with said this was like one of their favorites of hers. So for a dollar, I picked it up. Don't know when I, get, when I will get to it, but hopefully soon. Then I have The One and Only. This is by Emily Giffen. I've never read any of her books. I don't know if this is a standalone or part of a series or if they're, her books are just companion series. I'm not really sure, but it was really pretty. It's a dollar, and actually it's a, an arc, so that's kind of funny. But yeah, so I don't know, but for a dollar, what can you do? Again. I'm just going to keep picking up books for a dollar because then I don't feel guilty if I don't like them. And I can just unhaul them. Alright, so then I have, and these aren't from the library book sale, these are books that I bought from Amazon or Book Outlet. But I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. This was on Book Outlet for super cheap and it's won an award. I've heard great things about it. I don't know anything about it and I can't wait to get to it. And, you know, like every other book that I've bought. I can't wait to get to it. But yeah, I've heard really good things about this one. And I'm kind of, this wasn't a scratch and dent, but there's a cut from like a, what are those things called? Like a blade, like a box cutter. Ugh. Jeez, what are words? But um, so that kind of sucks, but you know, yeah, whatever. And then I have Ivory and Bone by Julie Ashba, and I've heard very mixed reviews about this. I think it's like one of those things that either like you love it or you hate it. I don't think there's an in-between, but basically the way it was explained to me is it is a prehistoric, prehistoric retelling of Jane Eyre or Pride and Prejudice. Oh no. I don't remember. 
remember. <laughs> but uh, the tagline on the front says two clans, only one will survive. So it's prehistoric, which I've never read anything like that. And that tagline, like, what? So I picked it up and I can't wait to get to it. Then I got Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. This is by Lewis Carroll, obviously, but it's illustrated by Camille Rose Garcia. And can we just talk about this? Like, absolutely beautiful. I couldn't, I could not get it. I think I first saw this on Peru's Projects channel. Someone had sent it to her. And I fell in love with it instantly then, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. And they had it on Booklet Outlet at one point for, like, super cheap. So I went ahead and picked it up. I do, I have a few copies of Alice in Wonderland. Actually, I'm kind of enamored by it. I love the Disney movie. Uh, I've never actually read it. I started to read it, like, a while back, but I never finished it. But I have, I think I have like retellings on my shelf, like Splintered. Uh, I think it's by A.G. Howard, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I have that on my shelf, but I don't want to read it because I want to like read this first. But I just haven't gotten to it yet, which shame on me. I mean, it's a classic and I love the movie, so I should have read it by now. But either way, at least I have another pretty copy to add to my shelf. And then if you just watched my Friday Reads video, then you would know that I have this book here. This is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I don't know anything about it. I am reviewing it for a website called uh, Social Book Co. And, and I'll talk more about what that is in my review next week of this book. I haven't read it yet. I plan on reading it this weekend. But yeah, uh, you know, I think people either love or hate her writing style. And I've only read one book by her and I don't... I don't really remember. I don't remember what it was called. Losing Hope, maybe? Or Hopeless? I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. But, I mean, I liked it well enough. You know, her books are, like, fa relatively fast, quick reads for me, which is why I want to pick it up uh, this weekend, because I, sh I should be able to get it done in the next couple of days. And then I have Down London Road. This is the second book in... I don't think there's like a name for it, but it's like the companion novel to On Dublin Street by Samantha Young and On Dublin Street. I loved it. I loved everything about it. I wish that I, there was more books with those characters, but I think this follows different characters. I think all of her books follow different characters. So, you know, but I love the first one, so I don't see why I wouldn't like this one. It's quick. It's romance, you know, mature content. I don't know if it's considered new adult, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, and now I now I have... I love this cover. Uh, Wicked by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Uh, I've been seeing this. Like, it pops up on Amazon for me as a recommended book, like, all of the time. And I loved him. I love her writing. So, you know. I picked it up. I actually put both the, uh, and it's set in New Orleans, which, what? I'm sold. I love things set in New Orleans. I'm like enamored by it. I've never been there. I've always wanted to go and hopefully soon I will be able to, but um, it's part of the Wicked trilogy. So this is the first book. I think the third one just came out, maybe. I don't know, but it's kind of upsetting to me because I don't know if you guys can see, but it's like broken right there. And I didn't do it. But, you know. I'll get to it eventually, just like all of these books. Or I'll unhaul them. Which, hopefully I don't, because that would be really sad. Okay. Then I have Ruby, and this is by Cynthia Bond. Is it Bond? I think it's Bond. Yes. And it's part of Oprah's book club, and there's a sticker on there that I can't get off. Thanks, book outlet for that. Um, I first saw this book on Proust Project's channel. I think she did pick it up from Book Outlet. And uh, so basically, I think it's about a woman that lives in Texas and she moves to New York to get away from like the 
the discrimination and the segregation and all of that. But then um, something happens and she has to go back home to Texas. And so it's just like her story about what happens when she's there and like the things that she faces. And I, it's about a black woman, I believe. Obviously, right? So yeah, uh, it's set in the 1950s. So, you know, it's part of Oprah's Book Club. It, you know, I've been seeing it everywhere lately, and I think it's just going to be a really good read, and I like to read uh, diversely. And Cynthia, oh, it just says that she is a Texas native, but she lives in L.A., so it doesn't say anything about her. I don't know if this is like her debut. If it is, or if you know anything about it, or, you know, you have any thoughts, let me know down below. And then I only have two more books, and then we're all done with this haul. Uh, so the last two books I actually have are Queen of Shadows and Empire Storm. So both by Sarah J. Moss. Um, this is the fourth and fifth book. Now, I have not read Air of Fire. I have it over there on my shelf. I've had it for quite a while. I've picked it up a few times, and... I just keep putting it back down. I don't know why because the first two books I absolutely loved. But people keep talking about Empire Storms and I think I've been ruined on a couple of things but I'm not sure because it's the fifth book and I'm only on the third. Uh, so, you know, I just want to read them. Like, I don't know why I haven't read them. These are actually, Throne of Glass is the very first book I book, bought myself after starting to watch Booktube and I loved it. So I don't know why I haven't picked these up. But I just want to talk about, like, can we just talk about this, like, Empire of Storms, huge. Or, I'm sorry, Queen of Shadows, huge. And then we have Empire of Storms. Like, what? Why is there such a difference? Are the pages thinner? Like, why? I don't know. Let's look. Let's see. Let's see how many pages. I don't want to ruin myself, but... But this is almost... Oh, okay. This is almost 700 pages. And this is, oh, this is, this book is actually 50 pages less than this one, but look at that, my god, you know, are publishers starting to make bigger books, are they starting to make them, uh, look smaller so people aren't intimidated to read them, because I feel like that happens a lot, like, I get intimidated to read books, like, there's a uh, Philippa Gregory, like her, the first book in her Cousin's War series. It's not that big, but I'm like intimidated to read it because of the content, like the writing's really small. So, and I feel like when books are like really chunky, like uh, Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, it took me forever to pick it up. And it took me a really long time to get through it because it's fantasy, which is something I don't normally read. But I absolutely loved it, but I haven't picked up the second one <laughs> because... I just know it's going to take me a really long time. It's the same with like Game of Thrones. Like I know they're just going to take me a really, really long time to get through. But anyways, um, let me know if you guys have read any of these books, what you think about them. Please do not spoil any of them because that would be really sad. And yeah, so you guys have a great weekend and I will talk to you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will link down my Twitter down below as well as my blog because I do have a book blog. But I, you know, I've been posting videos a lot more now than um, blogging. So, you know, I need to find a balance between those two because I do love my blog. I love to write, which is, you know, just part of being a book lover, I think. So yeah, let me know what you guys are reading and I will see you guys next time.